What is up guys? This is JDL Productions and what I have a video of today is this right here. This is a Cerberus Pyrotronics Guardian FB1A. Now, I believe I am the fifth collector at this point to have one of these. Um, the other people that have this are Ian, a.k.a. Tubby's Alarms, or reason more. Uh, Baltimore Alarms and Fans has one. Jan Eaton has one. Uh, Nathaniel has one, a.k.a. Enlind. And I now have one. So, yeah. Now... A little bit of info about this. I got this off of eBay about a week ago. Um, I got it brand new in box, as you can see right here. And as you can tell, it is in both English and French. So that's how you know that this is the Canadian FB1A variant. Um, here's the back of the box right here, uh, which if you want to read any of it, just pause. Here is the side of the box just looks like there's some basic info and here's the other side of the box which is the same as this but just in French um, it also came with the manual of course which I'm probably not going to read through it um, but as you can see there is a clear shot of the unit right there came with a packet of screws and then this little thing right here, I guess this is a radioactive material sticker that I guess you were supposed to put onto the unit. So, uh, yeah. Now, this is the successor to the original FB1, uh, which you've probably seen before. Nathaniel had one, but then he lost it. Um, this one is a little bit smaller than the regular FB, FB1, uh, from what I can tell. And the vents on this are a little different, too. The vents on this one, they're sort of more inner. Uh, the ones on the FB1 are sort of more, like, outer, like around here. And uh, there's larger gaps in between the uh, vents. And, of course, the FB, regular FB1 did not have a test button like this one does, as you can see right here. Now, here's the back of the unit. You can see it has got a yellow label just like a lot of other Canadian units like my Mastercraft for example. Uh, this also has a yellow label on the back. It seems like it was just a kind of a big thing with Canadian units. Um, so yeah, now if we open this up here, you can see it's got the normal Pyrotronics PCB that, of course, these all use, which I'm pretty sure this is like the original unit that used uh, this PCB. Um, the Wells Fargo units use this PCB as well. Um, let me think. Uh, there was a Sunbeam unit that used this as well, the 4531, which was just like the 4521, but it had a test button. Uh, the Norelco HB0938 used this PCB as well. So basically, um, the housing was identical to this, except it used this PCB right here. So uh, yeah, instead of the really weird, obscure PCB that this particular one uses. So uh, yeah, and um, I'm trying to think what I missed. Um... Oh yeah, and then there was a Sears unit that used this PCB as well, the 439.57301. Of course, that, that one was basically this unit right here used this housing, except it had this PCB, and the vents on the side were a little different as well. And um, honestly, I can't think what else. I know there's probably like, I, I think there's like one unit I missed, but I can't think of what it is right now. But uh, yeah, now... This one has the test button, uh, as you can see. Um, the test button goes to the horn, which is a Kobishi CLB-27, uh, just like uh, Baltimore Alarms and Fans and uh, Ian's. So, yeah. And uh, here's the sensor. It's just a metal sensing chamber with all these little slots on the side. And, of course, it's labeled ULC, and the sticker's coming off a little bit. That kind of sucks. Um... So, yeah. 
Now, like I said, this one does have the Kobishi CLB 27. Um, now, there was a Guardian unit that uh, succeeded this as well, the FB1B, uh, which that one was actually a decon rebrand. Um, I have the wired version of the FB1B, the FRU-3L right here, which this is a basically a decon 330 base detector. The regular, the FB1B was a uh, three uh, decon 300 base detector. So uh, that one Radio Shack detector that I had that I gave to Ian, um, it was basically a r direct rebrand of that, and it used this design right here, of course. Uh, so yeah, which of course. Um, Sort of, uh, uh, which is sort of similar to a Honeywell CD200A and a Jameson Code 1. So yeah, and pretty much all the Guardian units uh, did use that vent design, as you can see. So, um, yeah, I really don't know what much else there is to say about this. Let's go ahead and give it a test. As you heard, it's got that classic Kobishi CLB-27 sound. Uh, now these, of course, uh, I forgot to mention, they were made from about the mid to late 70s. Um, I haven't looked on the manual to see if there's a date on it yet. I don't see one. Let's look at the box. I don't see a date, but I know these were made from around the mid to late 70s. Uh, now, something I forgot to mention is if we open it up here, you can see, oh damn it, this little sticker fell off the sensor. Oh well. But um, as you can see on the inside here, uh, the actual base part, like like this part right here, um, it's pretty much identical to the base of the 77R. Uh, we'll use the Sears for example. As you can see, the base is just about identical. It's got these cover tabs. Uh, exactly where these ones are it's got the little things that hold the battery in and it's got this part right here too i forgot what this is called so uh yeah they're just about identical except slightly modified from each other of course so uh yeah go ahead and put the cover back on the test button's kind of interesting too it's a tiered shape test button but it's like really tall so yeah um, I really don't know what else, what much else there is to say about this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and test it one more time. So, uh, yeah, that is about it. That is the Cerberus Pyrotronics Guardian FB1A.